Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel and it's time for another match preview. It's AC Milan away to the Champions League. It's back and we've been away for a year and it's time for Liverpool to be back in it. It's great. And this is the first game, a new format. It's one big group. We're going to play eight group stage games all together. And this is the first one. It's coming from the San Siro, 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. That's Tuesday. And yeah, looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be a bit of a difficult one to predict, especially after the, the poor performance that we had at the weekend. But I'm going to do my best. And I'm going to give you a score prediction, a lineup prediction, and how I feel the game is going to go. So, yeah, let's get into the video. Firstly, before I get into the match preview, please, if you haven't already, hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button as well. It makes a massive difference, everybody who hits that subscribe button. I am trying, I've got a goal, I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers before the end of the season. And we've got a bit of time yet and slowly growing, but slowly but surely we'll get there. And thanks everybody who has already done that. So now let's get into the match preview. Um, yeah, it's AC Milan away. In recent memory, we've played them four times. Two in the group stage and two in the final. Um, of course, 2005, Liverpool won the Champions League final against AC Milan. In 2007, AC Milan beat Liverpool in the final um, under Rafa Benitez. And then also in 2021-2022 under Jurgen Klopp, we played them. We were in the group with them in the old format we played them twice at home and away we beat them at home 3-2 and we beat them away 2-1 AC Milan in their league in Serie A at the moment they're ninth with five points from four games which is not a great start not for such a historic club like AC Milan I mean they're like they've won the Champions League seven times um so they've won one drawn two lost one like I said it's not a great start for them, but they have sort of fallen off in recent years compared to what they used to be anyway, the team they used to be. Um, their most recent outing was a 4-0 demolition of Venezia, um, but they are the whipping boys of Serie A. So, it's, it's, you know, it, you can look at it at 4-0, great victory for them, but at the same time, look at the opponent they're playing. I mean, like we know the story with Italian football, like, you know, we say that it's like a farmer's league compared to the Premier League. It's not really, the top end is quite decent. The bottom end is poor, so, and Venezia do sit in uh, in bottom position. So, a 4-0 victory, you know, they should be getting a 4-0 victory. Um, Liverpool, on the other hand, we've just had the worst performance I can remember in recent times um, against Nottingham Forest. 1-0 loss at Anfield as well. First time we've lost against Forest since... 1968 or 1969 something like that which is absolutely shocking the game was just terrible it was just boring you could i i had a sense that we were going to lose the game in the first half it was just nothing was clicking the final ball was absolutely terrible poor decision making as well the pass was wrong or it was to the wrong person or was times wrong or, and then when the timing and everything was right, the accuracy was off. There was just, It just was not going for us. It's the same issues as what we had under Klopp. Um, I feel that under Klopp we had a team that could beat absolutely anybody, but that same team could throw out an absolute stinker of a performance, just like what happened against Forrest. Um, and, well, it is the same team because we haven't signed anybody, have we, really? And the same issues are now occurring under Slot. Again, a team that can beat United 3-0 at Old Trafford, which is a difficult task. Even when United are poor, it's a difficult task. And then go and put in an absolute stink like that against Forrest. So this one is going to be quite difficult to predict. So for my score prediction, I'm going to go with a 2-1 Liverpool win. Um, again, I just... We shouldn't be losing this game. We shouldn't have lost against Forrest, but we definitely shouldn't be losing this game, you know... We're in these competitions. We want to win these competitions. We don't want to just participate. We want to be there and we want to be getting to the latter stages and giving ourselves a chance at lifting the trophy come the end of it. So we need to be winning this game, especially with the new format. It's a bit crazy how it's just like one big group. You know, you want to be getting through. You want to be finishing in the top eight anyway of the, the big group and be getting straight through to the last 16. So 
you do that by getting points. We need to be winning these games. So a 2-1 Liverpool win. Um, again, would you be happy with a draw away to AC Milan? Probably. But I want the, I want the three points, so I'm going for a 2-1. And hopefully we can put in a good performance like we did against United and just demolish them. So now let's get into my lineup prediction. And this was quite a difficult one to predict. I see there being changes compared to... because, And I wanted to put in changes. It's been kind of boring just having the same lineup over and over again. Slot hasn't changed anything apart from the first game where he brought... Quanta started the first game, but then second game, Kanate started. And it hasn't changed. The lineup hasn't changed since then. Four games now. This will be the fifth. The reason I've got these changes, I'll I'll put my line up here so you can see it. But the reason I've, I've put in changes, and it's quite a heavily changed uh, lineup, because against Forest, Slot made substitutions and they didn't make sense to me. And I got the impression that he also changed the system as well, putting Trent into midfield. Um, well, he didn't change the system, sorry. He changed Trent's positioning. You know, we know he's a right back, but he put him into midfield. Um I think he done that to test it out to see how it would work against AC Milan, along with the substitutions, which is why I've got this team. Like, I think there needs to be changes because it is a different competition and you should have players who can come in to play different competitions. So when the games come thick and fast, you've got backup. That's why there's such a big squad. So that's why I think there's going to be these changes. So I'm going to go through it with you now. Of course, Alisson's going to stay in goal. Alisson's going to play every game, barring maybe like the Carabao Cup, maybe the FA Cup. That might go to Kelleher. Um, we'll see, of course. But Alisson's going to start this. I've gone with Simikas at left back. Now, he came on and I didn't see no need to bring off Robertson. Unless, of course, he's resting him for this game. But I just didn't get that impression from the substitutions, um, especially when you need to be winning a game against Forest. You need to have your best players on. And br bringing Robertson off, it, it just didn't make sense to me. So I think that was to give Simicast some game minutes to get him up to scratch so he'll be starting this game. Um, and that is my my thinking behind a lot of my changes. Um, as you can see, I've got Bradley at right back. Then... Centre-back pairing, I've got Kanate and Van Dijk. I don't think that'll change um, just because I was toying with putting Kwanzaa in there, but I just think if you're making that many changes to a lineup, it can be detrimental to the, the team. And I think at least if you've got that good, solid base of Alisson, Kanate and Van Dijk, you'll still be a little bit covered, even if you change the, the left-back and the, the right-back, the full-backs. Then, of course, with Bradley being... At right back, I've got Trent in midfield alongside, in the double pivot alongside Gravenberg. I think he's he, he will be more creative there. We know he can get four. We know he can play a ball. I think he's more likely to get goals and help with the attack from that position. I also think Soboslai will be dropped because I was not impressed with him against Forrest. He was quite poor, in my opinion. But the, the, it's not an attack at him, though. The whole team was poor, but just... Just anything he tried to do was poor. Alongside Salah, the, the pair of them trying to work it down that right wing. The passes were terrible. So I think Soboslai will get the chop for this game. Also because of McAllister. For me, McAllister was our best player against Forrest. And the fact that he came off says to me that he's trying to save him for this game. Um, especially at the timing in which he came off. So that's why I think McAllister will start. And he'll start in that more forward role where Soboslai normally is. This is my thinking. Diaz on the left. Salah on the right, and I've also gone with Nunes up top. I'm not, we're not getting enough from Jota. Our first game he came out against Ipswich, got that goal, and I don't know, he just seems to have just lost a bit of pace or something. Just It's not clicking for him. Also, like I said, the change of competition, it's time to bring in the changes. This is where you want Nunes. A little bit of chaos, be great in the Champions League. So I think Nunes is going to get the nod ahead of Jota as well. So that's my changes. That's my reasoning behind my changes. Again, let me know what you think. You could think I've probably done horribly wrong or I'm looking into it too much or not looking into it enough. Um, at the end of the day, it is a prediction. And it is hard to predict things like this. But this is what I've gone with. Um, and we'll see tomorrow evening. So that's Alison in goal. 
Tsimikas, Van Dijk, Kanate, Bradley, Gravenberg, Trent, Diaz, McAllister, Salah, and then Nunes. Again, get in the comments. Let me know if you've got any issues or any <clears throat> compliments, anything to do with the video, whether you think I've got the score prediction right or the lineup prediction, if you want to start a discussion, feel free to get in the comments. Um, also, I will be live. Look out for this thumbnail right here on YouTube tomorrow evening. I'll be live. I'll be watching the game. I'll keep you all up to date with what's going on with the score. Um, if there's any goals, offsides, fouls, anything that happens in the game, I will keep you up to date. And yeah, all are welcome. Again, if you have anything to say, you can get in there and have a discussion with me while we watch the football. So thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, do hit that like and subscribe button. That makes a massive difference to me and for my channel. And until tomorrow night's live stream, up the fucking reds.